The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. And so the work expanded. And after those two years, when the figures came in, and I looked at the expansion that we'd experienced, I just wept. James, those li there are lives being saved every single day right now. Coming up, Anne and Isak Pretorius share the current conditions in Africa. But that expansion to almost four times the number that we were reaching just overwhelmed me. Well, to say that we have guests that we love beyond words is, uh, I don't even have the ability to tell how much we love the Pretorius family. And Peter Pretorius, uh, he left us over three years ago. It won't be too long, it'll be four years. It just seems like it was like last year. I mean, you just yeah. like how can Peter not be here? And I mean, we were within just a matter of months the same age. I'm 78. And... Uh, you know, now 35 and going toward 40 years, we've been putting God's arms around the overlooked. And really, it was Peter that brought the whole family and his family. I mean, he went, saw what he never dreamed he'd see, and it changed his life forever. And then God used Peter, really, and ultimately Anne, and then ultimately his kids. And <laughs> here's Esau, which you'll see in a moment. But they, they changed our lives forever and many of your lives, and you've saved millions of lives. And Ann Pretorius, Peter's wife sitting right here, and Esau, the uh, son that uh, we thought you'd probably just, you know, play rugby and mess around, and we thought we'd get big business, and then all of a sudden, let's, uh, here you are in leadership along with mom, and Peter's not here. And yet you're seeing God do more than you've ever seen happen, yeah. which has to stun you. Uh, and t take it. I mean, we, okay, we, 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 can't, we can't spend time talking about how much we all miss mm -hmm. Peter. But we do. And you know our arms are around you. Absolutely. And thank you for that. We certainly do miss him. And having lived with him, worked with him for so many years, 42 glorious years, taking upon us challenge after challenge after challenge, the moment he was gone was just so hard for me not just because he was gone, but because of the weight of responsibility of the people depending on us. And, and it hit me so hard. And I was, I was standing in the emergency room, standing over Peter's body, and God spoke to me. And he said, tend to the foundation and expand. And that was a bit of a shock to me because it's the last thing I expected. I used to say to Peter, if something happens to you, please don't ask me to step into your shoes. I can't do that. I'm happy to have been a help meet and a support for all of these years, but to be the leader was a terrifying thing for me. But when God said, tend to the foundation and expand, I knew it was part of God's plan. And that's all I wanted was God's plan. And so I stepped into that role in fear and trepidation. But James, one of the most valuable aspects was the fact that I knew that there were people standing with me, that you guys had your hands reaching out, your arms around, your support there, that it wasn't going to change anything because we all love the mission. We love the purpose. We love the plan of God. And we dedicated to that. And with Peter not there, it didn't change that. The dependents were depending on you, your donors, those that contribute, those that love the children and the work in Africa. And I knew I could lean on that. And the success has been astounding. As I made sure that we were sailing a clean ship, Isaac was right alongside me, supporting me. I was bouncing ideas off him. He was giving ideas and I was watching the maturity that he had and started a handover process after a while. And then I must tell you, after two years, the, the numbers started coming in from the field. And with COVID, we had to adjust all of our programming but thank God we employ people on the ground, that we work grassroots level. So the people were reaching their people. 
and we didn't have to relocate anyone because we couldn't. <laughs> and so instead of reaching just the child, we were now reaching the family of the child and the community of the child. And so the work expanded. And after those two years, when the figures came in and I looked at the expansion that we'd experienced, I just wept hmm. because I realized God's plan yes. for the expansion wasn't my plan. It wasn't Peter's plan. It was a desire we always had. But that expansion to almost four times the number that we were reaching just overwhelmed me. And I realized that what God had commissioned me that day had been achieved. And, I, and our, I view, will be our, viewers, our viewers stayed with it in their yeah. challenges, yeah. which that in itself was a miracle a because we, miracle. We, we could not imagine that it would happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but there was a compassion that came on the people and I believe on every one of your viewers and your partners. That same compassion that said, the world has changed. We're all in a pandemic, but I can still do something. Yes. Mm. And that's the biggest thing. We can all continue to do something. And to me, I can honestly tell you, after walking so many years in this wonderful commissioning of God, to change the life of another is the greatest fulfillment yes, that you will is. ever yes, experience. Yes. That's great, Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac, all of a sudden your world changed too. It did. I mean, I, 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 lost, I lost my dad, my hero, my mentor, my... You know, the, the man who, te who taught me so much about Jesus that I, I know, you know. I mean, I often say to people, my, uh, my dad was the greatest example in my life. You the second in, in that way, James, of just really understanding what it was to love Jesus, um, to, to truly love Jesus, you know, and to, to then really embrace that and to, to speak that gospel, to share that gospel, to live that gospel out loud. Um, and so to lose all of that, you know, to lose your father is a big thing. To lose your best friend is a big thing. To lose your mentor and your spiritual father, but to lose all of those in, in, in one. And yet, as mom says, I think it was, you know, it was almost like a, an empowering that came from that. And, and what we saw, and, and, and part of what mom's talking to is that this is God's work. Yeah. And I really believe this is not about, you know, I just spent four weeks traveling around many of our programs. The thing that struck me most is not the impact we're having, not the, the lives that are being saved. James, those, there are lives being saved every single day right now, whether it's in a famine crisis in Angola as a result of drought or, you know, over a million people displaced in South Sudan because of flooding. We are saving, rebuilding 16 malnutrition clinics, okay? People don't see all of what's done. They see the feeding, they see the water. They don't realize all the warehouses, all the trucks, all the management, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the over and, 600 and missionaries. For that. They, yeah, they, absolutely. they were part of all of that happening. There's 600 missionaries, more yep. than 600 yep. working full-time, more than 4,000 working part-time. That We can't employ those people without the viewers who say, yes, we're going to make that happen. Right. But they are supporting a child with food or with water, but they don't see all of the rest of what has to be done. And traveling around our programs, what struck me most, I, I found myself many times, I was in tears one night in, in our room talking to Terry, and I said, I stepped back today and I watched our people, and I don't know if I'm worthy to lead these people. Yep. The commitment, so many the dedication. Of them, many of them who were missionaries left their homeland, yeah. brought their families there, and moved into what a lot of people say, moving into hell, yeah. compared to yeah. where they had lived. Yeah. And they, they were planted by God there, yeah. which is really how we found you all. It's how we began to find, we found the anointed of God, gifted by God, called by God, who yielded to God and planted their life in the darkness that God led them to plant in and become the light. Mm -hmm. And all we became and our viewers, and we said this to you, you keep the oil in these anointed lanterns, these people who planted their life in the misery, the suffering among the least and the unnoticed, and they became a light and let's keep the oil in the lantern. And you have done it. But the point is, it's all happening because people are making it happen. They're, they're putting the oil in the lantern. And I know you want to express thanks to the viewers who are watching us all over the world right now. Absolutely. We can't do it without them. 
We can't do it without you. We need you every single day to carry our hearts, to carry this mission, to continue to enable us to have that anointing, to have our hands filled so that where we go, we can take to the people what the love of God that they so deserve. You can imagine going through struggle like these people go through, wondering if there is a God. But we become that demonstration that there is a God, that he does love, he does care. And we are honored to be a part of the body of Christ all over the world who care about those that need that intervention in their lives. And you are the ones who do it. Yeah. And, and I, I think, James, that's what makes the viewers such heroes in this process. Mm. You know, I, I often say that people will come to us and they'll say, man, you're such heroes. You know, and my first reaction always is, well, um, let's rather pat the backs of our missionaries in the field. You know, ones, I mean, they were telling me a story recently, a lady, no vehicle to get to a program, malnutrition clinic. She put the boxes on her head and she walked for eight hours. Mm. Mm. I said to her, why did you do it? Why didn't you wait till the next day? She said, you don't leave your own children in that condition. Mm. Mm. That's mm. the level of ownership, okay? Yeah. But yeah. So my first reaction is always, no, we're not heroes. Our people on the ground doing this work are. But then I say to them, but you're actually a hero. The viewers that contribute, because I get to see, you've seen, you've had the mother say to you, thank you, James. Yeah. You've seen the look in that child's eyes when they get that clean cup of water. You've seen the children dancing and singing around the drilling rig just when the water starts It's like an out. entertainment center okay. farm. Yeah. I mean, right. All it is is water, but, clean water. But that, that is, I mean, it's so fulfilling. But there are many people who have supported faithfully for year after year after year, who have sacrificed to give to make it possible for us to do what we do, yeah. who never get to look that mother in the eye, hmm. who never hear the thank you. Mm. who never see the child physically dancing. We try and show it to them on video, but then they never experience that child. And yet they remain faithful to give because they believe that God has told them to give. Well, to me, those people are the most incredible heroes because they're doing it without anyone. I mean, I know we try and say thank you to them, but that's not the same as a mother whose, whose child's life has just been saved. And I think it's Looking because, you I think it's because too, through the television, we've been able to effectively show them mm. the need and God has grabbed their heart mm. and they're a part of it. It's not just they're giving to life outreach. Right. They're giving to something they really believe in and that God has put on their heart to give and they continually do that because it's in their hearts and that makes the difference. It's not a, a way of just saying, oh, well, I've done my part. Mm -hmm. Their part continues because That's God right. says, these people need our help. And it's through your love and your care and your continued seeing. And also we're able to show them what their love gift does. That's that right. makes a That's difference. Right. Right. And I, I know we've been over there many, many times and our hearts would be broken. But if I wasn't able to see some of the results mm -hmm. of what we have been able to do just personally in our giving mm -hmm. to help them. I, I, it would have devastated me because it will. If you don't see mm -hmm. that there's a, a good place they're going because mm -hmm. of the water, the food, mm -hmm. the life that we give them through that love and showing them that somebody cares. They're not by themselves. Those mothers are saying, please help my children. Mm -hmm. Their children's all they've got. Yeah. And, and Betty, you talk about that ultimate place to go. And that's where I just love the fact that all of this is undergirded. And many times the viewers don't even see and know the, the, the support of the gospel outreach, yes. of what we're doing to, to bring. I mean, 452,000 people who registered decisions for Jesus last year in our outreaches. In our okay. Outreach. They're going ultimately to, to the greatest Christ. place. That's yeah. okay. to trust Him, yeah. to save Him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of the viewers. They're the ones that keep it going. They and, and I know you do. want to say a big thank you, but we want to thank you for the oversight and all those missionaries and those literally 4,000 volunteer trained workers that you will often 
pay with clothing mm -hmm. or food for their family in a very specific way to take care of all their family. But you've got the hundreds of missionaries, many of them who left everything of comfort and planted their life in the midst of that challenge. Totally. The gratitude is overwhelming. Really it is. And the word thank you is just not big enough. But the fact that it's continuing, and I think for me that was a real challenge with Peter's passing. Where are we going? How can you be prepared for this? You can't be prepared. But God had prepared the way. And to see Isaac's capability as he's now taken over the lead and given me a very much more comfortable position. Thank you, my boy. <laughs> That's why I'm going to <laughs> But I'd just love to be able to assure you and your viewers that what we do is in good hands mm -hmm. and that they deserve a return on their, Amen. not just investment, a return on their sacrifice. Yeah, and their love. They've given so much. Mm -hmm. They've done without so much so that others can benefit. Mm -hmm. And, and what we do a privilege. say thank you, but I think something to also that I would love for the viewers to know is that while we don't get to engage and interact, mm -hmm. I wish you could meet every single one of them. Mm -hmm. I really do, because I would love to give them a big hug and say a massive thank you. But part of how we say thank you, James, is as we get together as a team in our devotional time and in our prayer time, and with our prayer networks around the world that are supporting us is we ask them to pray something over each and every one of those viewers. And this is what we yes. ask. Pray that Jesus bless them extravagantly. Wow. Okay. Exactly. That they be blessed extravagantly because our hearts are so filled with appreciation. Mm -hmm. And every time I'm in the field and I'm in our program and I, you know, I'm maybe at a malnutrition clinic where I see the fact that we're saving lives or I'm talking to one of the 1,000 ladies in people South Sudan who met us because their children were malnourished, who now themselves feed more than 60,000 people That's out of their own production because of what we've been able to That's do right. together with them. Mm -hmm. When I'm in those programs, I often find myself stopping and just saying, Lord Jesus, bless the people that contributed to make this possible. Bless them extravagantly. Yeah. Very important that you hear exactly what he said. We don't keep them dependent on the feeding. We get them stabilized and healthy and we show them how they can not only care for their family, but begin to feed others who are hungry. And that's what he just referenced. Talk about mothers mm -hmm. whose children have been saved, who are now being used to save thousands of children by the work that they do. And it is miraculous. We don't create socialism. We have the love of God flowing mm -hmm. through yielded lives and hands. Mm -hmm who give sacrificially, but then we take them into a place of responsibility and productivity and blessing others themselves. To you, Isaac, and to all the missionaries, thank you. And you know what we're able to do? You're not able to go there necessarily to hear it. But like Betty said, we're able to show it to you. And by the way, Peter said, please don't come over here unless you're gonna stay at least six months. We don't have time to take care of Americans and Canadians and all these people from these advanced countries. We don't have time to take care of you. We're too busy. If you come over here and plant your life out, but don't come over here as a tourist. We can't take care of American <laughs> tourists over here looking at the mission fields. And the cost to get over here, send it to help us drill water wells. That's what we're asking. We want you right now to join us. As I look at these supporters that we've all been thanking, we need your help right now to complete the 350 fresh water wells. We've already seen the sites. We already know there is water. We need to drill the wells, $4,800 a piece. $48 gives literally 10 people water the rest of their life. You want to give 30 people water the rest of their lives? 144. Could you give a, a well, 4,800? Betty and I give a well every time it comes up on the air. I'm not talking about every day, every time we have the emphasis. Okay, could you give a well? Could you give 1,200? Pray others join you, three more, we got a well. Whatever you can do, I want you to, I want you to watch. I want you to listen to Esau because he's showing you real problem. You're the answer. Well, how does she feel about having to use this water? Is she concerned for her children? All right, gonna milk. It's not good for the kid, but there's no option. There's no option, eh? No option. Sure. Yeah. This mother's dilemma is one shared with millions of mothers in rural villages throughout the world, not having access to water that is safe for their children to drink. 
we've been told what their story is. Their, their mother's too sick to be able to actually go and fetch water. So these young kids, as little as they are, are having to go down to the river. We're following them now, and they're gonna go and fetch water for, for their sick mother and for their family. A mother's heart is to provide the best for her children. But what is this mother to do when the best is not available? She has no other choice but to send her children to the dangerous and diseased waters of the Nile. Just, just take a look at this water. I mean, the water here is just so dirty. It's, uh, there is no way that I would ever be able to give my children this water. There, there's crocodiles in this river. There's, it's, it's, it's not safe for him to begin there, but actually his greatest danger is the very water that he's gonna be carrying home. Knowing farewell, that this water may steal their lives. It's stolen other children in this village's lives, but the reality is, as their mother told us, they have no option. There is no option here because they don't have a water well. How do we change this, you ask? It's, it's actually quite simple. It's you opening your heart and partnering with us and making it possible for us to bring Mission Water for Life to this village, to this little child, please. Help us today. Help us save this child, his family's lives, and all the other families in this village by drilling a water well here, by giving the best gift we can give, by giving the gift of water, giving the gift of life. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, Misak, I'm so glad, you know, when you said giving a, the greatest you can give, the gift of water, and then you said the gift of life. And, and I've said it to you over and over. I don't care whether it's feeding, rescuing somebody that's being trafficked, being used, uh, being kept a slave, or whether it's water. You're actually giving the greatest gift there is. You're giving life. And because you give life, and, and think about this, we are giving water for life because of the water of life. And when those precious people, it, it changes their whole world. I mean, when children line up to be fed and they'll wait and wait and wait just to get food. It doesn't matter how long, but you know, people will oftentimes go to an entertainment center, like Six Flags or wherever they want to go, and they'll stand in line a long time to get on something fun. But these children are standing in line to have food. Well, they do the same thing for water, only they have to walk miles to get it. And there's no joy because normally they're bringing home sickness and they're bringing home death to the family and the children, but it's all they have. But then you give them a well, Betty, mm -hmm. and then you give them one that children can function. We have even, this is just how ingenious the, the missionaries are. They found that there's a merry-go-round <laughs> well pump that you can let children get on it and push it, and, and then they can put a holding tank, and they're pumping water up into the holding tank, and they can actually give them more places that they can get water so they don't have to come to one pump. These missionaries are amazing. I mean, they, we showed people how they can grow their crops better if they can catch a little rainwater and they make little holding tanks out of, out of skins, and then they can put water on their crops. These people are so easy to teach. It'd be easy to teach them here in America and in Canada if you'd stop doing it all for them. Stop the nonsense, for heaven's sake. God wants responsibility, productivity, oversight of all that he's given us to oversee wisely. That's what we do when we give people water. We give them life. And it's a celebration, baby, when the water comes out. I mean, it's like the greatest thing that ever happened in their town. When they go to the well and they get the water, and only when the missionaries have us come from out will they let them just play there with the water pump because they're all so happy. They don't let them do that all the time. This is precious water. But I'm telling you, the love of God flowing through you has an impact that is eternal. It changes everything forever, but also right now. I wish we could just understand. Jesus is here now. Would you please represent Jesus by giving not just a cup of water, but a well of water? Could you give 4,800? Could you give $48 to give 10 people water for life? 144 to give 30 people water? You can do it. God, please help everybody watching to do something. Would you do it? Would you go get your bank card and use it like a check? Dial that number or go online and make the gift God puts on your heart. If you could give a well, 4,800, I don't have to wonder if you're gonna do it. If God's given you the ability to do it, you're gonna do it. And I wanna thank you for that because you're giving life.
thank you so much. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving what God put on your heart. Make that call, make that gift, and know this, you're giving life. Across the globe, hundreds of thousands of lives are lost each year to waterborne disease, and nearly half of those are children under the age of five. Through Mission Water for Life, you can give mothers hope and children a future as we provide clean, life-giving water for thousands of children and their families before it's too late. With your gift today, you can help drill and establish 350 water wells this year. Your gift of $24 will help provide clean water for five children. A gift of $48 will help provide for 10. $72 will provide for 15. And $144 will help provide life-giving water for 30 people for a lifetime. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the God's Daily Promise devotional set. These four seasonal devotionals each contain a daily scripture, inspirational message, and room to journal your prayers and insights from God's Word. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the Faith, Hope, and Love coaster set. All four beautiful sandstone coasters come in an elegant natural wood holder and artistically display the words of 1 Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,200 to help provide water for 250 people or a gift of $4,800 to help sponsor a complete well. And you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I, want, I want to make a real point. If you give a water well or a portion of a water well or just help, you're putting the arms of Jesus around precious children. And boy, you think you don't bless their parents and their grandparents? Please, just know that when you give a cup of water in Jesus' name, and you do it to the least of these, Jesus said you're doing it to him. Wouldn't you like to have given him water when they gave him wine mm. with gall and vinegar? Mm. Hurt him. Sad. We give him water. He's like, man, I know God's got his arms around you. Mm. And you're putting his arms around mm. millions of people. And we want to thank you for that. Thank you for making it happen because you do send the light. You give the life. You share the life. Thank you for doing it. I didn't have a father pulling for me. I didn't have anybody say, way to go. But God had a plan. Next week, Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.